ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك له الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا وقائدنا ومعلمنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد all praise is due to Allah we seek his guidance his mercy his forgiveness his assistance we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our actions whomsoever Allah guides there is no one to lead astray and whomsoever Allah leads astray there is no one to guide him I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him upon his family his companions and those who follow them until the last day O you who believe revere Allah as he should be revered and do not die except in a state of Islam beloved brothers and sisters in Islam for the past couple of khutbas i have been addressing an issue within our community related to domestic violence however today because of the occasion this is the first Friday coming out of Ramadan. I'm going to divert from the series of khutbas on domestic violence and I will return to them at a later date, inshallah ta'ala. But I also want to take advantage of this time to offer myself and to you some words of advice, especially in light of the fact that we have our youth, many of our children are with us today. And so, when we're coming out of the month of Ramadan, we're usually on a spiritual high. There's a momentum that is there because of all of the acts of worship and the, the intensity of what it is that we did in the month of Ramadan. We want to be able to somehow continue that. And we know this is how the, the Sahaba were that uh, Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahimahullah narrates that when Ramadan was finished, the Sahaba would reflect for several months about the Ramadan that passed them and how they could have, things that they could have done better or reflecting on what took place during the month of Ramadan in terms of themselves. And then for the remaining months of the year before Ramadan comes, the five or six months preceding Ramadan, they would prepare themselves for it. So essentially throughout the entire year, they're living with the month of Ramadan. And we know that Ramadan, it's a time and an opportunity and a chance for change. We always talk about how important it is to affect change in our lives. And Ramadan is the perfect opportunity to do that. But we also speak often about how it is that we want to change the image of Islam or the image of Muslims in the eyes of others. Not only do we want to affect change within ourselves, but we want to affect change around us. But there is a reality that exists and we believe it's part of our aqidah, this reality. We cannot change the image of Islam in the eyes of others. We cannot change the condition of other people. This is not something that is up to us. Now before you draw conclusions, make assumptions, I need you to listen very carefully as I explain 
our belief in this regard. As I explained this statement, because at the end of the day, we can't change the image of Islam around us because it's not up to us. What do I mean by that? The verse that we always recite when it comes to change is what? إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Indeed, Allah does not change the condition of a people, whether it's from good to bad, or whether it's from bad to good. Either way, the Mufassireen, they, they allow for both interpretations. Allah does not change the condition of a people until they change the condition of themselves, until they change what is in themselves. Now this verse is very telling. Why? Because the very first part of it is the answer to that statement that I had made initially. Inna Allah la ma It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He will not change the condition or the state of a people. Hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Until they change what is in themselves. So when we look at this verse and we reflect upon it, what are we responsible for doing? We're responsible for changing or affecting some sort of change within ourselves. And even that is by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our responsibility because I have choices over my actions. I have choices for what I can do, what I choose to believe in, what I choose not to believe in, what I choose in terms of my intentions, what I choose in terms of purifying myself, what I choose in terms of doing the right things. That's up to me. I have that choice. But in terms of being able to change those who are around me, I have hope that there will be some effect or impact based on my actions, but at the end of the day, it's not up to me. That's the reality of it. I can't change those who are around me. I can't change the image of Islam. But I am required to take the proper means. I'm required to take the steps. This is what Ramadan teaches us. When we look at Ramadan and the actions that we do in the month of Ramadan that they're meant to be a way to change ourselves. But at the end of the day, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The result of our actions is up based on whatever Allah wills, whatever Allah chooses. So what's the message that's being imparted here? There's a very important message that is being imparted here. The result of our actions on those around us is entirely up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to us. Why? There are three things that we need to be considered of. And this is the take home message. And I'm going to repeat these three things throughout the khutbah today. But there are three things that we need to be aware of. If we do something, then number one, it has to be for the right reason. If I do something, anything that I do, it has to be for the right reason. Reason. What is that teaching us? This is teaching us sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why are you doing something? If it is not to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if it is not to seek His divine pleasure and reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then perhaps we're doing it for the wrong reason. As Muslims, this is our belief. We do things only seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That has to be our intention. And that teaches us sincerity. That I'm doing things for Allah. I'm seeking His pleasure. And so there's no other reason why I'm doing it. Now there might be other effects that happen that come alongside that. But ultimately, my intention, my heart, my Belief needs to be sound and set and straight when it comes to why I am doing something. It needs to be ultimately, when I go through all the different reasons, number one, at the very top, and ultimately it should be the, 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 the only reason, is that it's to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That should be the reason. I'm seeking Allah's pleasure. 
So that teaches us sincerity. I do things wholly and completely for his sake. Ya Allah. That's what our fasting teaches us. The second thing, we need to be truthful, have sidq in terms of our actions and our intentions. We're not doing things, trying to dupe people or dupe anyone or ourselves even, to try to cheat or beat around the bush. Or We have to be truthful. We have to have sidq in terms of our commitment to Allah. We want to be true to our promise. We make a commitment in Ramadan that, Ya Allah, I'm going to go through this Ramadan to whatever you intended to do. I'm going to fast every single day. I'm going to read as much as I can of the Qur'an, I'm going to give as much charity, etc, etc. If I make a commitment, I want to be true to that commitment. That is one of the characteristics that Allah uses to describe the believer in the Qur'an. That you make a promise, you make a commitment, you're true to it. When it comes to your actions, you're truthful in your actions. So these are all actions, inwardly, outwardly, towards yourself and towards others. In all of your actions, it's all about being truthful, siddiq. That's the second element. The third is that we take the proper means. So that when we're doing something, we do the right thing. We take the proper course of action. So when we look at these three aspects, sincerity, having a sense of truthfulness in all of our actions and our intentions, and then making sure that we're doing the right thing, we're taking the right course of actions. Ramadan teaches us all three of these things. How so? Well, we look at the point of fasting. Why do we fast? The Quran is clear. It's in order to attain taqwa. Taqwa is something that will lead us to a sense of sincerity. Because when we do, when we have taqwa, it's about gaining this awareness of Allah. I am conscious of why I'm doing something, and I'm doing the right thing, and I'm doing it for the right reason. This is leading towards all three of these different elements. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a hadith Qudsi, that He says, كُلُّ عَمَلْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ لَهُ إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِبِ This is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه. That the Prophet ﷺ said that every action that the son of Adam does, it is for himself except for fasting. And this is a hadith Qudsi, which means that the Prophet ﷺ is saying this uh, on, uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, every action that the human being does is for him except for fasting, it's for me. And I am the one who gives a reward for it. Why? Because nobody really knows if you're truly fasting or not. I can come out to people, I can say, I'm fasting. But then when I go into the washroom, I can slip a sip of water, drink it, just to kind of do, uh, deal with my thirst. And then I walk out of the washroom and everyone thinks I'm still fasting. Yeah, yeah, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, right? So that's why ultimately when you fast, it's for Allah. There's an element of sincerity. Only Allah knows truly if you're fasting or not. And even when we fast, it's not just fasting in terms of refraining from eating and drinking, but we also fast from other wrong actions in terms of lying or in terms of saying bad things or looking at bad things or hearing bad things. We, we've heard of this before many times. But it indicates that our fasting teaches us being sincere. Sincerity. Why am I doing it ultimately? Why do I go through the fast? And I take care of my actions throughout the month of Ramadan and especially while I'm fasting. That training that I put myself through. Why? What's the point? It's for Allah, ultimately. Ultimately, it goes back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it teaches us sincerity. But we also have to take the right course of actions. Meaning what? Well, my fast can be valid when I fulfill the requirements of the fast, which are what? Two things. One, that my intention is I'm doing this as a fard fast. So in Ramadan, it's a requirement that I have to have the intention I am fasting because I, it is obligatory upon me to fast. And that intention needs to be made before Fajr. 
right? According to some scholars, you can make that intention at the beginning of the month to fast all of the month of Ramadan. But according to other scholars, that intention needs to be made every single day before Fajr. So before you actually begin the fast, I have to have the intention. I'm doing this fast as a fard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first requirement. The second is that I refrain from anything that would break my fast. So if I fulfill those two requirements, my fast is what we call in Arabic sahih. It's valid. But then the question occurs, if my fast is valid, is it accepted by Allah? That's a different ask altogether. That's a different question that we ask altogether. Why do we say at the end of when we do something good, whether it's our prayer or sadaqah or fasting, what do we say? We say, taqabbal Allah. It's a dua. May Allah accept it. Because I don't have a guarantee. I don't know 100% for certain, for sure, if my fast is accepted by Allah or not. I don't know. What's required in order for my fast to be accepted? Well, it has to be sahih, meaning that I fulfill the conditions, the intention, and then I refrain from doing anything that breaks the fast. Okay, so the obligation of fasting has been lifted from me. But did Allah accept it? I don't know. What is that based on? It's based on those other two elements. Sincerity, ikhlas, and siddiq, being truthful in my actions, in my commitments, in my promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the two ingredients, shall we say, for any action. If you want your action to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those are the three things that you need. Do it right, have the right intention, sincerity, and then make sure that you're truthful in terms of your actions. This is what Ramadan teaches us. There are many stories in the life of the Prophet ﷺ that also teach us this reality. And one of the stories that illustrates this very much so is the story of Uhud, the battle of Uhud. And when we look at the verses, some of the verses in the Qur'an, there are many verses in the Qur'an that talk about the battle of Uhud. But I'm just going to mention a couple of verses that go into some of the details of what happened in the battle of Uhud. The Prophet ﷺ had given a certain commandment to the Sahaba. He placed them in a spot on the hill of the archers, known as Jabal, as Jabal al-Rumat. And he told them, whatever happens during the battle, whichever way the tide turns, you keep your positions. Don't lose your positions. And so this was the command of the Prophet ﷺ. The battle began, and the Muslims were winning. And the Sahaba who were on the archer's hill, they were maintaining their position. But then when they saw that the battle, what they perceived, was over, and they saw that there was booty, and then the spoils of war and, and whatnot, so a number of them, 50 out of the 50, 40 of them, left their position. And those other Sahaba who remained, they said, the Prophet ﷺ told us, don't leave our post. We're not supposed to do this. Don't leave your post. And the other Sahaba, they said, yeah, but it's over. The Prophet ﷺ meant during the battle. Now the battle is over. And so then they went down. That's when the tides turned again. And that's when the Muslims suffered. The losses that they suffered. And many of the great Sahaba were killed including Mus'ab ibn Umar, including Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, radiallahu anhu, Asadullah, right? The uncle of the Prophet ﷺ. Many other Sahaba, around over 60 of the Sahaba, ended up being killed in Uhud. And so then the Sahaba, then they ended up going and retreating up towards Mount Uhud. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about this incident? إِذْ تُسْعِدُونَ وَلَا تَلْوُونَ عَلَىٰ أَحَدٍ وَالرَّسُولُ يَدْعُوكُمْ فِي أُخَرَاكُمْ فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمًّا بِغَمٍ لِكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُوا عَلَىٰ مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ ثُمَّ أَنْزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ الْغَمْ أَمَنَةً نُعَاسًا يَخْشَ طَائِفَةً مِنْكُمْ وَطَائِفَةٌ قَدْ أَهَمَّتْهُمْ أَنفُسُهُمْ يَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ ظَنَّ الْجَاهِلِيَّةِ 
يقولون هل لنا من الأمر شيء قل إن الأمر كله لله شيء ما قتلنا ها هنا قل لو كل يمحص ما في قلوبكم والله عليم إذا تصد very very powerful verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says remember when you were running far away in panic you were retreating and not looking at anyone you weren't concerned about looking at you were just retreating and the messenger was calling you while the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam was calling you from behind that he was calling come back come back to your posts don't retreat and so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them based on their actions remember right actions because they took the wrong actions that was an act of disobedience they disobeyed the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam what was the result fa'athabakum ghamman bihum that they were the reward the result of their actions was sorrow upon sorrow anxiety upon anxiety distress upon distress ghamman ala ghamman ghamman bi ghamman and so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then he says and he continues لَكَيْ لَا تَحْزَنُ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا مَا أَصَابَكُمْ in the previous verse Allah forgave them لَقَدْ عَفَى عَنْكُمْ that's what Allah says in the verse before these ones so Allah forgave the sahaba for that misstep that they took in order so that they don't grieve for what they lost nor do they grieve over what they were afflicted with because if you make a mistake the point is don't be sad what should you do if you make a mistake fix it you make a sin make tauba go back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's where the focus should be it should always be towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the results of what happened that's from allah is to teach me a lesson perhaps it's so that i can be uh, uh, rewarded for but at the end of the day it's from allah it's not from me i do my part but the end result is up to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what this message is telling us but if you make a mistake you slip up you fall don't be sad don't be sad rectify yourself correct your actions because that's what the nature of the believer that's who he should be or she should be is someone that they're concerned with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so i'm not going to focus on the result but rather even if the result doesn't go the way that i want it to what happens sometimes if people they strive for something and they have an end result in mind and they don't attain it so there's one of two reactions that people will do they will either change their action Okay, let me try something different. Or they might just give up. They might just say, forget it. Didn't work, I'm done. The Quran tells us that we need to do the former, not the latter. Change your ways. Do something else. Perhaps there'll be a different result, but don't focus on the result. That's where the motivation should come. We're done Ramadan. We practiced in Ramadan our fasting and our giving of sadaqa and our, our watching ourselves and so don't give up on that keep going keep going if we find that we're surrounded in an environment where people are looking bad against muslims or uh, about islam and what not and we we're trying and we're doing and we find things aren't changing they're not getting for the better do we give up no that's not the way of the believer we change our ways <laughs> we change our actions and we change what it is that we are capable and responsible for doing that's what i'm responsible for for myself i can change myself and i can rectify my intentions and i can look back look back and reflect what is it that i could have done better what is it that i i, I perhaps there was a shortcoming in in my intention maybe i wasn't 100% sincere in my actions but we don't give up we keep trying and we keep striving and we keep struggling but my focus is not going to be on the end result because again that's not up to me that's up to allah subhanahu if allah honors us he uses us in order to spread goodness in order to spread the truth of this deen that's from allah that's not from me that's from allah and he honored 
us with that. I have to understand that. Change is not up to me. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this next verse. That then there were some of those that after they suffered, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they changed their ways, He forgave them, then He sent upon them the sakinah. Right? After the gham, after the anxiety, after the sorrow, after the distress, then after the distress, He sent down serenity in the form of a slumber, a sleep. Now these sahaba, they're in the middle of the battle, but yet there was a slumberness that came over them. And some of the scholars, they mention that if a person is in a struggle, they're in the heat of the moment, in the battle, and then they're overcome by a calmness, right? The serenity. That to the point, some of the Sahaba, their narrations, that, 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 that they, their swords were actually falling out of their hands because they were the slumber that overcame them, right? They're in the middle of the battle. That's a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that He's accepting their repentance, He's accepting their sincerity, right? But if you, that happens while you're praying, then no, that's a sign of the opposite, right? If you're praying and then you're, you're falling asleep, well, no, that's, that's a sign of the other. And so then, in the, the, the rest of the verse, there were those who then they had these bad thoughts about Allah. Again, have a good opinion of Allah. Don't have bad thoughts or bad opinions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were others who were disturbed by evil thoughts about Allah. Thoughts that weren't true, right? ظَنُّ بِاللَّهِ غَيْرَ الْحَقِّ This is not true about Allah. ظَنُّ الْجَاهِلِيَةِ These are thoughts of ignorance. And so then they ask, do we have a say in the matter? Right? Is it up to us? Do we have a say in the matter? The response comes, قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَمْرَ كُلَّهُ لِلَّهِ The affair, the matter, is all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They conceal what's in their hearts, what they don't reveal. And they say to themselves, if we had some say in the matter, none of us would have died. Right? Because there was a debate before Uhud. Should we leave the confines of Medina, go to Uhud and fight, or should we stay behind? And then there was a dispute amongst the, the Sahaba. And of course the hypocrites were there, and they said, no, no, we should stay. And then the Sahaba said, no, we should go out. And, right? But then the end result, what happened, ended up happening. And so then the, Allah says in the Quran, even if you were to remain in your homes, what was your fate would still come to you. Even if you were in the safety of your homes. Again, the amr is not up to you, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Through this, Allah tests what is within you, purifies what is in your heart, and Allah knows best what is hidden in the heart. So this is the lesson for us to understand from Uhud. We need to have sincerity, we need to be truthful in our actions, and we need to ensure that we are taking the right course of actions. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله العظيم لي وكم نساء المسلمين من كل دم فاستغفروا إنه وفروه الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ونيطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما Allah tells us the ultimate reward for the people of Siddiq when he was speaking to Isa ابن مريم عليه السلام and this is at the end of سورة المائدة قال الله هذا يوم ينفع الصادقين صدقهم لهم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار خالدين فيها أبدا رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه ذلك الفوز العظيم What greater reward could anyone ask for than what Allah mentioned here? Allah will say this day, this is a day when the truthful will benefit from their truthfulness. This is the day when the sadiqeen, the truthful ones, in all of their actions, inwardly, outwardly, towards themselves, towards others, this is the day when your siddiq was going to benefit you, when your truthfulness is going to benefit the people of truthfulness. What's their reward? Gardens, beneath which rivers flow, to stay therein forever and ever and ever. And then on top of it, Allah Allah will be pleased with them. They will be pleased with Him. That is the ultimate success. That is the ultimate triumph. And so these are the three questions that we always have to be asking ourselves. Whenever I'm doing something, why am I doing it? That's for ikhlas. I need to make sure I have sincerity. It's only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And I have to ensure that am I being truthful in my actions? That's the second question to myself, to others, inwardly, outwardly. And the third, am I taking the right action? Am I doing the right thing? Those three questions, we have to live with these throughout our entire lifetime and continue to struggle and don't give up because it's never about at the end of the day the result of the effects of those around us or the impact that it has on those around us. That's not up to us. Our motivation should be those three aspects. Sincerity, that I'm doing it for Allah and that's my motivation. I'm doing it for Him regardless of whatever the result is. That's not up to me. But I'm going to do the right thing and I'm going to have a sincere intention and I'm going to have truthfulness in anything and everything that I do. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك يا ربنا سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين اللهم اجعلنا من الصادقين اللهم اجعلنا من المحسنين اللهم اجعلنا من المخلصين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرض المسلمين وانصر أخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان والطف بنا وبجميع المسلمين بلطفك في مجرت به المقادر ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار والحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة